Hi guys and welcome to this brief update on the Oceanica Tambor after about a week of wear. It's been, uh, I've actually had this on for about five days and then it has sat um, on top of my watch box and has been wound. It was allowed to wind down fully just once and has been wound up again today and back on the wrist today. It's seven days since I did, since I received the watch and did the initial review. And we're just gonna pop this on the time grapher and take a look at the results and see where it's reading now that everything's settled down. We've got the left angle set 53 degrees as you can see. So we'll start that. So beginning with a dial down reading, We've got an incredibly healthy amplitude. Um, two, anything above 270 for a Seiko is considered very healthy indeed. That's incredibly impressive. Um, minus nine, minus 10 seconds. Beta, I'm still not happy with. That can be improved. It's not the worst in the world, but it can be improved. Dial up. We should have very similar readings, I suspect, and we are indeed still around 290s. A uh, very slight decrease in beta, about the same regarding timekeeping loss. Pendant, oops, apologies, pendant down. We actually have an increase, uh, very slight, the other way. Still a good healthy amplitude, um, but we're sort of plus three-ish or so. Pendant up. And we are back to a slight decrease as before. Pendant right. and less of a decrease, but very similar readings. And finally, pendant left, which is the least important position among all the timing positions. And again, very similar readings. The only one that really deviates is the pendant down position, which I'm just gonna pop that back into. And rather than a slight loss, you'll see we actually have a slight gain. There's not a huge amount in, in it. The amplitude is very impressive. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to open this up and I am going to visually confirm uh, just to verify that that is indeed the case because it does seem very impressive for Seiko. Um, so far, I'm impressed. The timekeeping on the wrist has actually been very good. So once I've corrected the beat error, I'll just do a little tweaking to get a good average of the timekeeping above uh, um, where we're at. We're here with the watch on the time graph and microphone ready to be regulated. The case back has been unscrewed and um, as far as regulation goes then pretty much everybody knows what's what, who's regulated a watch before, um, but I will just briefly cover that for those who aren't familiar. But I just want to show everybody as well, we take the case back off here and there's the inside of the case back, it's milled completely flat in the center rather than domed. So that makes the case back quite thick. You can actually, it's difficult to see there, but that's actually quite thick. So it adds a little bit of extra thickness to the case, which is nice. But also nice is this movement, this metal movement ring here, around which is a secondary slim rubber gasket and your primary rubber gasket, which seals around this face of the case back is here. So you've actually got two gaskets, which is a nice little feature, I like that. You've got a gasket which seals against, tight against the face here, 
and you've got this gasket which seals against this edge here. So that's uh, that's a really nice little feature. I'm just going to pop that off um, and likewise with the other one because they'll both get a, um, a recoating of silicone grease before they get refitted. And here you can see the, uh, I'll just get my peg wood, you can see the NH35A movement, very, very similar to the 7S series for those familiar with the 7S26 with the well-known Seiko Magic Lever, Magic Finger Lever system. Um, although the primary dis difference is it's not exposed, as you can see, it's got a cover plate here and is not exposed like the 7S series is. For regulation purposes, you've got the balance cock here and the balance pumping away, uh, beating away like a little heart of the watch. And here is the stud which regulates the beat error, this one here. Now, this is something you don't want to mess about with unless you have a time grapher because uh, you can visually check and set this in beats to a degree but um, you really need a time grapher to get that bang on. And here is the regulating lever for the timekeeping. So first and foremost, I'm going to be adjusting this in small increments until I've got the watch in beat. And what I want to do is get that as close to, if not bang on, zero beat error in the dial up and dial down positions. And then I will fine tune the regulation here. So just to give you a, a rough idea, I'm not going to remove the oscillating weight, which is uh, ordinarily this is something I would do on rebuild. Uh, I would rebuild a movement and then regulate it before I put the automatic weight back on. Um, in this case, I'm not going to remove the, the weight. I can access these easily enough. It, uh, it should go without saying movement of these should be done very slowly, very carefully and up close with magnification because it's very, very easy to poke something into that fragile little hairspring in there. What I'm going to do here additionally is take out the movement ring. It's a very nice milled aluminium it looks like, movement ring. Just give me a little bit better and clearer access. Now we're getting somewhere near, we're down to point two. And that is right where we want to be at a B Terra of zero. We've now got dial down, we have got 270 degrees amplitude and a gain of plus 45. So we need to back. This off. That is actually a lucky stab. Um, I moved that more than I initially intended. However, that is currently giving me a reading of zero seconds per day, zero to plus one seconds per day at 270 degrees amplitude with a zero beat error. Do excuse me for not wearing finger cots. I really should be. However, this being my own watch, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not something I will chastise myself too much for. Put that back on the machine, just double check. There we are indeed, so we'll flick that to dial up and we should be getting a very similar reading. And we are indeed fantastic. So back in after regulating and we'll take a look. So starting again, dial down. And as you can see, we've got a much nicer trace there. Zero B Terra, 274 amplitude. And the initial high amplitude spike, I think must have just been um, a bit of a bit of a glitch. It's just one of those things because uh, 
Once I tried to replicate it and film it, of course, it didn't happen. It seemed to have settled around 275, 280 dial up, dial down with uh, about 270, well, between 260, uh, 265 and 270 and the sideways hanging position. So dial up. Pendant down, and you can see we've still got a slight increase pendant down, but it has tightened that up a little bit overall. Um, so adjusting the beat error has made a slight adjustment um, and tightened up the timings, as it were. Pendant right. Pendant up. And finally, pendant left. So you'll see that in all the key positions, we've got an excellent reading of zero on the beat error with um, a slight loss in most positions uh, bang on zero in one and a slight gain in the pendant down position so hopefully and theoretically that should all even out across the board during wear so i hope you found this interesting and the peak inside the case there's only one thing left to do which i neglected to do in the last one which was to demonstrate the loom and to do that i'm going to compare it against the helm komodo uh, and also the seiko marine master 300 which a friend kindly loaned to me to uh, to wear and try out for a brief period and if anyone's interested in that, I'll do a quick overview of that before I have to send it back. What I'm going to do is expose all of them evenly to a UV light, which you can see coming in here. Just to give you an idea, I'm going to expose all of them evenly to a UV light for a full minute. And then I'm going to leave them for a minute or two, which I will... When that uh, part of the video comes, I will speed up to see how long the loom lasts and how quickly it fades. So here we go. So there you go, folks. The blank pan fifty. Uh, sorry, the uh, Oceanica Tambor, um, three hundred meter dive watch, and I can say in conclusion, having now been inside this case to just regulate to tighten up the regulation a little bit, and in all honesty, it was quite acceptable before. It was keeping time well on the wrist, uh, despite the beat error. It's just me being pernickety, I uh, I knew that I could I knew that I could improve that, and I just wanted to tighten that up a little bit. Uh, but having been inside it, I can say I'm now even more impressed with this lovely little Kickstarter watch. Um, I believe the price. I don't know if I mentioned this in the previous video, but I believe it was two hundred dollars for the Kickstarter campaign for this watch, and all in. I believe that's that's an absolute bargain. I'm really, really impressed with the construction of this case. It's very, very solid. I have, after greasing and refitting the case back, I did put that through back through the tester. And as you saw in the previous video, the case is very solid, min, um, demonstrating minimal flex or deflection. Um, very, very strong, very solid, very impressed overall. Uh, beautiful watch. I can highly recommend this if you're wanting to get yourself something modern with a vintage vibe. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.